This is not a silent movie, it's the welcome to Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies. My name is Uwe Bing, I'm the managing director, and as always, we are live streaming from SIFS. Welcome to all of you in, in the room. Today is an exciting day because it's one of our previews of one of the most exciting things uh, we are dealing with in the Institute, the future cities and mobility. And uh, to do the introduction and preview today, we have our distinguished uh, executive, Henry Pearson, from the Institute, to talk to you for the next 20, 25 minutes. Hope you will enjoy the session. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, well, as uh, Luke said, I'm, uh, I'm the chief priest here at the Institute. Uh, a little bit about myself, for you who haven't met me before. Uh, I've worked here for about 10 years. Uh, I started out as a student worker. I've done a little bit of everything, more or less. Uh, I'm basically a political scientist, and then I have an MBA on top of that. Uh, I've done a lot of analysis work, I've uh, worked on many membership reports, uh, and uh, I've focused a lot of, on uh, retailing and uh, uh, consumption, and also I've also been a, a writer of this uh, report about future cities and, and mobility. And uh, the background, my background for that is uh, in my work with regional development, uh, that's and, and that was also that actually the start point for me uh, when I started to work here at the institute. Uh, uh, there was uh, a lot of talk about uh, uh, the integration in the urban uh, region. There was uh, uh, a large project, uh, uh, the building of the urban bridge, and uh, that uh, transformed uh, the, the larger uh, city area of Copenhagen uh, to a large degree, and that's very interesting. And we are seeing some trends here that's uh, comparable to that uh, in, in the future. Uh, I'm not the sole author of the report. We also have Martin Hoopse, uh, my colleague here, and uh, uh, Klaus Lohnsen has contributed, another futurist, uh, and, uh, and, and also other people. Uh, Look, like Hinkenberg, of course, and, and so forth. And uh, this presentation is not a full presentation of the report, actually. It's a, it's a preview. It's a, it's a little, little snack, you can say. We'll do the, the full presentation on May 14. Uh, for our, our, it's an exclusive event for our members and for some very, very uh, uh, selected, some selected uh, uh, people that will do some uh, a very special event. But you will get the, the preview. So what's it about? The future belongs to the city, and how intelligent cars will transform city, uh, society, and the economy. That's the the, the um, 
the term for the, the report. And uh, as I said, uh, this, this is what we want to speak about. And why is this important? Why is future cities uh, really important? Well, it is uh, actually the core uh, thing here is that, that the future, much of the future is actually created in, in cities. And uh, as development in the world accelerates, it's, it's very much concentrated to the city. Th this is where uh, most of the, the world economy is generated. And this is uh, uh, something we have seen accelerating a lot, not at least, uh, in, for example, in China, in, in India, in, uh, in the emerging markets. Uh, but it's also important for our uh, cities in, in, in Europe. Uh, and there's a lot, lot to say about it. And you can say one important thing is that cities of the future will be smart. They will be intelligent. We'll have smart housing. We'll have smart infrastructure. We'll have smart mobility. And we are focused on this report. We are focused on mobility. And you can say a lot of, uh, about that. Uh, important parts of, of mobility in cities is, of course, I mean, it's, it's mass uh, commuting, it's uh, uh, metro lines, it's about uh, building out uh, bike lines, uh, using that bike transport in a new way. Uh, it's about uh, building on, on, uh, on the height and not um, and preventing ur urban sprawl. If we can see how urban sprawl is actually uh, something that is uh, uh, it's a threat to further growth. Uh, it makes the city inefficient. We need to, to concentrate. We need to, we need to get more compact and more flexible and better mobility in the, city, in, in the cities. And then uh, there is an aspect of this that's really interesting that we have been looking at. It is the introduction of, of what we call intelligent cars and uh, automated cars and eventually uh, fully automated cars in the future. But there has been a lot of talk about this. Uh, it, there's been a lot of talk about the technology, but, but not really about the consequences and how it fits together with the future city. And that is what we are focused on. And I think that some of our results are really uh, astonishing. We'll see about that. Uh, well, this is a picture from today. And uh, this is something uh, I think uh, is, would not be compatible with the vision of uh, the city of the future. Where is this from? I think it's somewhere from it's Italy. Yeah. <laughs> and this, is, this is something we have to, to deal with. And of course, there's a lot of ways to doing it. One way is this new technology. And, and we'll see about what, what is. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. And, and you can say uh, there's been a lot of talk about robotic cars. It's something uh, a little bit scientific, is, is, uh, how to say, uh, something uh, weird into the long into the future, something that's not really. Is it really something that's. Uh, uh, has any consequence for our daily lives, lives here now? And, and the answer is, of course, not. Uh, but the truth is that these changing, changes are coming, and there are some things here, there are some aspects of it that's really uh, already uh, of importance, and we'll see some great changes in the just the coming years, the five years ahead, uh, that will accelerate. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And one main thing of the introduction of what we call smart or intelligent uh, cars. And it's not, it's not robotic cars. It's not uh, self-driving things uh, running around in the street. It's just uh, new technologies helping us to drive smarter and to use roads smarter and uh, more efficient and uh, less polluting. Uh, this technology is available. And uh, it's basically, here now, it's, it's about, for example, uh, advanced uh, cruise control systems. And they are here now. And uh, if, you, if we take this technology that is, that is now introduced uh, into the mass market, when, it will, when it's fully uh, implemented out there, when all cars have it, this will significantly, just that technology will significantly reduce congestion uh, on the roads, both <coughs> in uh, highway traffic and in, in cities. And uh, the cars that are coming now uh, is, for example, BMW has an i3 series that's coming out. It can drive uh, by itself, more or less, in, uh, in 40 kilometers per hour into the, in the cities. Uh, and the, 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 the main interesting thing about it is that it will reduce congestion uh, significantly. And uh, it's actually enough for just a few percentage. Uh, if just a few percentage of, of cars and, and transports on our roads 
have this technology that is already available, uh, then you will see an impact. And this will mean, mean that in the coming five years, up to uh, 2020, we will start to see that impact coming. Uh, and it will be really interesting. And that's just the beginning, because this is an, an ongoing development. The technology will not stand still. And you might have seen this video before. It's a Google car, the Google car, the robotic car, the, the thing that uh, a lot of people just uh, a few years ago said was impossible. It's something that will uh, never happen in, uh, in the in decade. So this, uh, this man, he's actually blind, and he's stepping into the car, and he's, uh, he's bring, 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 uh, driving around. Uh, and there's actually there are people out there today that says that this is impossible. But is it only running on uh, special uh, roads that have been kind of approved for it, or is it running like the way that it's Okay, so that it's allowed everywhere. No, a special route in some of the states in the US, and it wouldn't be allowed there. So they still have to change the US. So. And there's a lot of other issues, but it's okay. Yes. Very well, how are you today? What is it? It's the soft one. So what's interesting about this? This is actually not the future, it's today. It's, it's an experimental car, of course, and it's, it's something that will not see this technology fully out on the roads in the years to come. It will take some time, but that's not the point. The point is that, that people say, even today, some people say that this is impossible, but it's already here. And, that's, uh, and, and, and then what about the consequences? Let's have a look on that. Well, we have, had, we have, uh, we have made some calculation. We have, has, we have made some analysis of what this will mean for, for different cities in, in Europe. For, uh, Copenhagen, the Copenhagen city, the Copenhagen area, uh, for Brussels and, and for Oslo. And uh, the main advantage of this technology, the intelligent cars, not uh, the robotic cars we saw, but just an intelligent cars coming in that technology, is that it will be, we will be able to reduce and eventually maybe fully remove congestion. To make way of congestion, to make way of, of hassle in traffic. And, and what will that mean? What's the possibility? Uh, this map uh, shows a little bit, tries to show that. And you can see the, the dark uh, yellow here, the orange part. It shows how far you can travel from today if you want to go to the city center of Copenhagen in rush hour. So this is basically actually the map of Copenhagen, what Copenhagen is today. It's defined by how we work and we live. That's, that's the city region of Copenhagen. And we know that uh, most people, uh, they can tolerate to, to uh, commute about one hour uh, to their work, but that there is a short drop in acceptance. So you will, of course, you will find today people uh, far outside of this uh, dot or this orange to commute to Copenhagen. But, but basically, this is the picture. And the potential, if, if congestion can be removed, the, the, the thing that the promise that this in this technology, uh, then the city area of Copenhagen can expand out with it on this, uh, this larger area. And in this area, there's about uh, 500,000 uh, people. And that would mean that Copenhagen would, would be able to grow. You can say that the city area would grow with 500,000 people. And you can compare that to, to that's where uh, the Earthsome integration comes in, uh, where, that I talked about before. It's, it's, it's a bit comparable to what happened when uh, the bridge over Earthsome opened. What was the consequences? Well, in that case, uh, we've seen how uh, the regional economy of Copenhagen has grown with about 10 billion Danish kronos a year. Each year, this generates 10 billion 
James Brown's expert to the economy uh, compared to when the British were not uh, existing. And, and if, you, if you look at how many people who can be integrated in this uh, uh, work life area, it's, it's comparable. It's actually bigger. So, uh, so you could say that the potential, the immediate pot potential for Copenhagen is 10 billion Danish crowns extra in growth each year. And, uh, and then you have other aspects about as well. Uh, because what about these areas? Uh, what, what can happen to them and what, what are there? And uh, just to, to, to mention three examples. If, if this materializes, uh, then suddenly new areas are opened up for living and exploitation uh, around Copenhagen. That's today a little bit uh, out of reach, you can say. And this, is, this might be really interesting for, uh, for example, communes down here. You have uh, Faxe and uh, uh, Steus, two Danish uh, communes called something else. Municipalities. Municipalities. That's a little bit off today, but have a great potential. This could be a new gold coast uh, around Copenhagen. And you have other areas as well. And then uh, they're making a huge investment, a huge uh, scientific investment uh, in Lund, in Sweden. And there's the ESS spallation source, and it's a huge uh, particle accelerator. Uh, that's, uh, they're, they're investing about 10, uh, 20 billion kronos uh, to build that. And that will be the, the, the largest uh, scientific uh, uh, Co uh, complex uh, in the Russian region, and this this will also be much easier within reach uh, of Copenhagen uh, when this if this materializes. And these are just examples of how this uh, can uh, impact. And there's also, of course, there might also be losers. There might be uh, areas that are today a little bit on the edge of, of this uh, dark yellow uh, that are not so uh, attractive, uh, but that are really. Uh, uh, it's it's cheaper to live there, and uh, so, so yeah, they have a they have a place in the in the hierarchy, so to speak. Uh, but they will, they might become losers uh, if new if younger families start to move out to these more uh, uh, how do you say very nice uh, uh, areas with, with uh, some qualities that you don't have uh, in the older areas. Uh, and that's just just examples. Uh, so that's Copenhagen, and then we have had the look on, on uh, this is Oslo, uh, this is basically the same, you have the, Oslo is, is here, and the, the dark yellow is uh, the area defining uh, the city uh, center, or the city area of Oslo today, and then you have the potential here, and, and uh, Oslo is actually perhaps a little a bit more interesting than Copenhagen, because the traffic situation around Copenhagen is not that bad compared to the city size, uh, Oslo has not a uh, challenges. Uh, so, so this this is something uh, it might be even more interesting here. But even more interesting, uh, the huge uh, the, the cities of Central Europe where you have a huge uh, population concentration. And this is Brussels. And Brussels is here in the middle. And, and you can see that the commuting area is about the same size as the commuting area around Copenhagen. It's actually a bit smaller, uh, but the potential. If you can bring down congestion levels, it's much larger. Around, I said that around Copenhagen there was 500,000 people, but around Brussels here is at least two million people, at least maybe more. Uh, there's about uh, nine, ten million people in uh, in in Belgium, and this means that that Brussels, that today is about the size of Copenhagen, uh, have the potential to become some kind of mix or or coming closer to becoming a megacity. And that's something that we really need uh, in Europe. Uh, megacities have some qualities that we, uh, that we, uh, uh, that we miss. Uh, uh, we, have a, we have a member that's living out here, actually, in, uh, in Ostende. And he's, uh, uh, say, a director in, uh, in a bank. And he, he commutes from Ostende every day to the central uh, Brussels. And it takes him two hours and ten minutes to get to work. And he's, he's really, it's, it's something, in, in Belgium, it's really special to live by the coast, so he's, he's doing that sacrifice. But you can, you can imagine if, if this commuting time can be brought down to one hour. And then uh, I talked a little bit about size. That's uh, interesting here. Um, because uh, this, 
this is a, a chart that's showing congestion ratio efficiency. See, and uh, on this uh, axis you have uh, uh, the size of the uh, city city size, and on the other one uh, it's a congestion uh, level. Uh, and, uh, and you can see that uh, uh, some cities are above this line here, and some cities are, are below. And, and the cities that are below uh, are actually they have a, a better uh, mobility situation uh, than uh, than average uh, compared to their size. Uh, when the cities above, uh, they are worse off. Uh, their their, city, their uh, mobility situation is uh, is worse, and this means that cities up here that are uh, land, like Oslo, Stockholm, Brussels, Hamburg, uh, this is where this uh, technology has the greatest potential. And we saw that in, just in Copenhagen, in the Copenhagen area, and Copenhagen is actually uh, it's not so bad. Uh, the potential is huge. So what, what does it mean in, in, uh, in uh, yeah, large cities like, like Hamburg or in areas like, uh, like Brussels? Uh, and then we have the time frame. So, what about uh, when will this uh, uh, when will this uh, technology and development come? Uh, so, we have three basically three uh, steps. And the first is uh, what we call advanced semi autonomous uh, autonomous cars, and that technology is already here. It's, it's, what we, it's actually what we have, uh, what you can actually buy today. And this is enough to start reduce uh, congestion and also pollution. Uh, the next step is fully autonomous cars that will be able to drive uh, by itself. Uh, but uh, for legal reasons or practical reasons, uh, you, you will be obliged to drive yourself. And then the final step, driverless cars. And that, that is something driverless, fully driverless cars, robotic cars, uh, it's something that we expect will come in 2030. But the effects of those new technologies will come much uh, earlier. Uh, we talked about Copenhagen before. What about Denmark and Copenhagen? Actually, uh, uh, we can expect this, <coughs> this shift to come later uh, to Denmark than, for example, uh, say Luxembourg, uh, because uh, uh, the fleet, the car fleet in, in Denmark, is actually sh uh, exchanged uh, very slowly. You can say uh, there's only only five percent uh, of the cars are exchanged each, each year uh, in Denmark, and that would mean that. Uh, shifting 75% of the core fleet would take 15 years in Denmark. And that, that, that means that this, that's an obstacle, obstacle to this development that needs to be addressed. Uh, so where is, will it happen uh, faster? Uh, and I mentioned Luxembourg. And 75% the, and the, uh, of the cars will be, will be uh, exchanged uh, in four years' time in Luxembourg. So, so we'll probably see this development first in cities like Luxembourg, but also other Rich cities around the world. It could, it could be Singapore, it could be Hong Kong, places like that. I will look there first. Uh, and of course, uh, in a country like Denmark, it would be possible to to speed up this development uh, by laws and new laws and regulation. And that's our, our also something that we uh, that we uh, uh, like to talk get the message for the politicians. So that's the. That's the that's the message for today. That's the the preview. I have a comment and question. I take it that the assumptions behind the calculations is that there's no investments in in infrastructure. That's true. And uh, there is in this, of course, a very important message to the politicians: do not invest wrongly here. Uh, those huge investments in infrastructure, which which usually come when you have bottlenecks, they will be wasted. It could be, and then you have and, and, and I mean, it will be very cheap, much cheaper then to to make incentives to renew the fleet uh, of cars in the market rather than investing in uh, obsolete uh, infrastructure. I, I totally agree, and, and and it's not just about. Uh, uh, work-life area, so to speak. Uh, there's also uh, uh, the question of, of pollution and uh, climate change, uh, things like that. Because we have technologic, technologic development shift, and and we have a situation in Europe where uh, there's not so many resources to too much to, to use anymore. Uh, so so this is actually a kind of you can say a free 
thing, more or less. It's just it's more a legal thing than a uh, infrastructure investment thing, and that's the really fine thing. And it's also a new thing because th this has been discussed for a bit for for twenty years. Uh, but uh, something that has been kind of a, a challenge or, or, not, or an obstacle before uh, has been that you, you needed to. Uh, there wasn't a, a thought that you need to make special lanes, so you make you need to remake the infrastructure a lot to, to handle those kind of cars. But it seems like you don't have to do that. So, important message to politicians. Yes, make uh, speed help make this happen. Yeah. This will actually also even even that venture is good in itself reduce uh, CO two as we have a lot of more cars, especially in Denmark. Where the like in Indonesia heaps of all cars. Uh, so so if you were to uh, have new regulations that would improve the the, uh, the speed up the change of, of cars, that would uh, incentivize people to have new cars. Mm. So you would have benefits on all sides. Yes, that's true, I agree. Yeah. When looking at the different cities, did you 